Okay. What is up, Gunpla Modelers? This is Strider Prime, bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models. How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is doing okay. It is Monday, October 7th, 2019. And uh, how was <coughs> everyone's weekend? My weekend was pretty good. <laughs> Very good. For those of you who did not know, I was um, at New York Comic Con this weekend. Uh, actually, I was there for the past four days. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, I I didn't want to say anything to anybody because I wanted to keep it as a surprise. But even though I can, I never got the chance to buy the tickets or go. And obviously, I was not planning to go because of all the things that's going on around with me. There was no reason for me to go. However, because a good friend of ours, Dan Moore, also known as Danny Gunpla on uh, YouTube, um, was going to be teaching Gunpla building at New York Comic Con, <clears throat> he reached out and asked if anyone was interested in uh, working at New York Comic Con. And, I, uh, and then I kind of like said, hmm. I think my schedule is free for that that time. So I reached out to them. I reached out to uh, Bluefin. And, uh, you know, some emails were exchanged. Some information was uh, gathered. And before you know it, I was in. I was in going to New York uh, Comic Con. So let me just break this down. So, uh, you know, I, um, we met up on Thursday. Uh, it was a rainy day Oof, cold and rainy you know I was I, I was kind of happy with the with the warm weather on third on um, on Wednesday but when Thursday came and that cold weather kick in with the rain ooh, that was really cold mm. so we met up with the group the uh, representative from bluefin was there they gave us our, our exhibitor badges which is good for four days <laughs> we went in we set up the tables and uh, they gave us, uh, you know, the sample kit, which was basically a, it, this was a kit that was used last year, um, which was basically a, a test kit of some sort, you could say. It's not a high grade, yet it is a 144 scale, and it is not as articulate as, like, let's say, the, uh, the revived version of the RX-78 II, but it still served its purpose, and it was a great um, um, test bed for anyone who wanted to build a Gunpla for the first time. And how we set it up was pretty simple. Uh, we, we laid out, there was a long table with, 20, with uh, 12 chairs, two tables, so 24 people, you could say. We set them down, we give them the kit, we explain to them how it works, how, you know, how, how to follow the instructions. We also asked them if you need any assistance, we're here to help you out. Any questions, we're here to help you out. And that was it. And we give them like around 20 to 25 minutes to complete the kit. And the remaining 5 minutes so that way they can do a survey of what they, uh, what they experience with the product, with the company, and with the booth, and the show, and all that stuff. And then we just cleaned up the table a bit, rearranged the cha chairs, and bring the next 12 peop uh, 24 people in. And we did that in 30-minute intervals. 30 minute intervals. Thursday was kind of weird because you know people were just coming out of nowhere and we just put this kid in and all that stuff but we never by Friday we started to form lines because clearly there were people who were interested in getting a free kit uh, so much so that I've noticed that many people came back for returns like they came back to to get the free kit all three days Obviously, because of the four-day pass, uh, they may have gotten four-day passes. I don't think I ever uh, saw a third-day, three-day pass, but four days. Uh, you know, people who do get those, or bought, you know, the uh, the thir uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday ticket separately. They came on, sit down, get that, get their kit. Now, in all due fairness, 
we try to keep it um, organized to the point where we don't want them just give them a can and they walk away because then we leave that chair open and then we have to redo it. We want them to build it there and experience it with everybody and you know talk amongst people and and all that stuff. Mm. So um, we try to keep it fair, but you know obviously there are those who were a little greedy, a little, and in all due fairness, excuse me. We were setting up the, the, the kits with uh, a set of nippers, tweezers, and files, so that way they can remove the parts. However, the deal was that we give them the kit, but the nippers, that ha you know, the set of nippers came back to us, and they assumed it was free. In reality, those nippers were more expensive, those tools were more expensive than the actual kit. And because those kits, we had like a ton of those. I mean, we're talking. I I, I kind of did the the, um, the round table a average of how many kits we distributed per every half an hour, and it had to be at least over three hundred and fifty to three hundred and sixty kits a day, except for Sunday, which was a little shorter. So we must have it had to be over uh, over a thousand, over the eleven hundred kits we uh, give away. Uh, oh, you know, that give literally give away just to uh, allow them to get an introduction to mono building. And they loved it, you know. It was fun. Uh, it was really fun, you know. I had, we had great time, great laughs. Um, it, was kind of, it was also fun to see the kids just sit down and, and learn it and all that stuff. They ask me questions and all that stuff, and I try to help them out as the best I can. Be patient, of course. You know, I was not, I was not expecting... Um, um, perfect grade builders right there, you know? And obviously there were those who were asking, oh, where can we uh, purchase these kits? And we kind of tell them, no, this was a promotional kit for you guys to build, but if you want the real kit, the, 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 the high grade kits or the master grade kits, we directed them to the uh, section where the where Bluefin and their, their section, showing all their, gun, all their kits they were selling. <laughs> Yesterday's video, I did a recording of the um, Bluefin booth area, so you guys see, if you if you need to see that, just look at my previous video of all the models, and they had a lot of models there, they had obviously Star Wars, that was, they had a ton of Star Wars kits there, especially um, the Star Destroyer, which I'm kind of like now regretting not getting it, really, really regretting it not getting it. Um, besides Gundam, we also started to do uh, bills for the Star Wars line too, and they gave us the little Mecha Collide Y wing, and we just made you know we gave them the nippers for this. But by the time we 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 lost about maybe three or four, maybe a close to maybe five nipper sets. So we decided, okay, we're only going to give nippers to those who are going to build the Star Wars kits because of how small they are. The Gundams is basically almost like an SD kit. You can actually twist and twist it off, and that's it. You can put them on. And obviously, when people start to manipulate the parts and all that stuff, um, sometimes they it snaps and then it flies somewhere else. So we're like scrambling to find the parts. Now, red and white and and the blue parts are easy to see from a distance. It's the gray parts uh, was hard to find because the the, the rug was black. And yeah, and obviously people were stepping on things and moving and kicking. And uh, luckily, we, I, for me, luckily I think we found all the parts that was falling on the floor. And then you know, we also had spares, so that was good for that as well. Um, I would like to take the moment to say thank you and for for your uh, thanks to Dan Moore, um, who who reached out to me and accepted me for coming in. Uh, Xavier from the Bluefin group to also that's uh, I want to say thank you as well uh, for giving me this opportunity to experience this and to help out those in Comic Con. Um, I want to say hi to uh, Julio. I want to say hi to uh, Raymond, um, JD, and there are two other gentlemen that I'm I have, to, I have to apologize that I don't remember your names. So if you see this video and I'm not saying it, I'm sorry. I forgot your names. My apologies for that. But hopefully, I uh, I know one is not going to be. I asked them if they're going to go to Anime NYC, and one of them said yes. The other one said no. 
still said wish. I wish them the very best, and I say thank you again. Um, hopefully, I did a good job, you know. Yeah, um, and that's it, you know. That was it. So, yeah, that was a very long four days of me waking up early, going to New York, coming back, exhausted, tired dragging my feet and of course you can barely do things on your own because for me it wasn't just an event to attend it, it was it was literally work I was working no time for me time or anything like that but I tried to get a little bit of recordings here and there so people can see how you know all the stuff that was there um, the best I could of course um, my <laughs> my last video that I posted uh, there was an uh, there was an ending part where there was a, a little dance-off thing that was happening in front of Comic-Con and I recorded it as I was leaving but unfortunately YouTube didn't like it even though I, I did not monetize my video uh, it was it was uh, trademark music was trademarked so I had to redo the video and, and put it up without the trademark video so what are you gonna do and can't win them all these days unfortunately So, before I show you the haul that I got, uh, I want to do this quick little video also here. I got my case of kits that I purchased from Hobby Link Japan when they had their autumn sale. It was a few kit things here and there. But also, um, the reason why I purchased some stuff, I, didn't, I wasn't going to buy anything, but I forgot that I had two, two items in my warehouse. And it, it didn't ship out in time from the last uh stuff that I purchased so I didn't want to like you know I was gonna say let me pick one or two other things just so I could be a little bit more stuff to come in but then the autumn sale came in and I was looking at all the stuff that they had and in reality the, the Gundam kits that they had already have and didn't feel like buying repeats I want always always want to get something different and I did so let me show you not Gundam that is but other things but let's begin with this one so I'm um, Here's the Portanova Green from the 30 Minute Mission kits. I did see this, of course, at, um, yeah, they were selling, oh, by the way, yeah, they were selling the 30 Minute Mission kits over there at Comic Con, including a flight weapon pack that was already sold out. It was purchased by everybody, so unfortunately I couldn't grab my hands on that one at the, at the, in the, at the time that I was there. But getting this was cool, and I can't wait to do a build of this, as well as the option armored parts for close fighting for the Porto Nova exclusives and this is a sand yellow color so I can't wait to build this one and try it on this guy so I got that from Hobby Link Japan but that was the stuff that I had for, uh, sitting in the warehouse the stuff that I purchased separately first thing I got was this this is from the, um, oh my god, I can't even read this, uh, oh my god, so small, I remember this brand, I just can't remember what it's called, and I can't even read it, I'm getting old, but these are little metal strips of little vents here, and I thought I thought it was something that you can actually snap off individually, but it's all like a single strip. That's actually a cool little photo etch part right there. Can't wait to see what kit I have <clears throat> that will utilize this. And then I saw this one. This is called the airbrush break. So it's an airbrush set, or it's a, it's like a little stand for your airbrush. You know what? I have like this. And I'll show it to you right here. This thing has been like falling apart left and right, and I always have to fix it. You guys have probably seen it during my videos, but I have this little thing that I connect to the side of the of the table to hold up my airbrushes. And even though this thing is kind of loose and it holds up the airbrushes okay, sometimes I need something to settle it down. And getting this, I'm gonna take it out of this right now. I know this. It's cheap. I, I don't know how much I paid for this. As a matter of fact, let me spin this down a bit so you guys can see him. But if I use something like this, 
I can rest my airbrushes like so. And I can even probably prepare the paint easily here. Um, so it's not a it's not a heavy item to put on the table, and definitely I'm going to probably bump it off here and there. But I could probably put some added weight on it, like magnets or something, to give it a more stable look to it. But this is kind of cool if you want to display your your airbrushes like that. I like that, and I can't wait to utilize it soon. Let me just put this in the box. It's definitely, I'm not going to use that now. Hopefully this will be at the new place. Next item is actually a tool that actually one of my friends said I can easily get, but I saw this on sale and I said, let me get it. And this is a HG tube cutter for plastics. So if you have tubes, you can actually close this and then cut them evenly. I've always had difficulties cutting tubes because it's always never right and accurate, but at least with this one, allow me to do so. This can expand out from 3 millimeters all the way up to 28 millimeters, so that's good. And if you look at here, you can actually remove the cap, and there is an, there's a blade there that you can actually use to, you know, sand down the inside to make it more even. That's actually kind of neat, neat feature there. So these are the items that I got. Now, the last things I got was a bit of a surprise. I like military vehicles also, and um, even though I bought a tank or two from you know uh, from MosquitoCon this year, I saw that they were selling some tanks at uh, Hobby Link, and I said, eh, just let me get like my uh, like a four or five dollar tank or something small that I can build just to enjoy. But I saw these, and these were very, very, very cheap. It was like around six dollars or so. This one I'm about to show you is, I think, six. The Mark of a Mark III tank, 148 scale. This is a remote control right here. And it does say remote control tank. Now, I thought this was a tank that comes with a small motor and maybe the spacing to put a receiver of some sort to control it. And then you need to buy yourself a radio control uh, item, right? No. Even though this is the parts of the tank and I don't want to open this up, the actual controller is right there and the motors are there. So I can actually build this and control it. Ain't that the coolest thing? The next one cost me about close to $10 but it was well worth it. The Leopard 2 TV Mark II. Again, this brand is from ARII. This one's the same thing, ARII. But this one's the Leopard Tank. And this one, if I pop this open, again, with the remote control and the actual parts to make this tank. There's water slide decals, the instructions. I've always wanted to get a, a radio control vehicle. Or basically a tank, not a car, a tank. So I got these two guys, but we're not done yet. Same price, but the Type 10 main battle tank, Japanese ground development forces. This one's from Ashima. Oshima, um, Aoshima, sorry, say Ashima. And I'm just going to open this up here. And here, you, um, same thing, and you can, but it has all the same parts, but you can actually build the the actual radio control and it's two channel. So I guess if you had another tank from this brand, you know, and maybe have the same, you can actually control two tanks at the same time. I don't know. I have no idea. So this is cool to see to get all this. this, is, this I, I thought I had to build it, and it comes with the motor and maybe a, a wire connected to the tank and then I'm just dragging my ass around following the tank but no this one you actually build it and I can't wait to build this one um, hopefully at the new place so I'd like to give out a shout out to a few people that I saw over there at the show um, 
mainly Jordan, um, Double O Gundam Reviews V2. He, uh, he was there with his girlfriend. It's great to see them again. I'm glad that they were able to uh, come over. Also, um, um, Anim um, Gundam NYC was there. I know he goes under a different name, so I apologize if I don't remember it. And we had a nice little talk and all that stuff. And, and he actually gave me a free gift, which I was, you know, very happy to get one. He gave me this book, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam's The Origins, Volume 7. Battle of Loom. I mean, I'm not a manga fan, but I appreciate it. And, and anything in reference to Gundam materials, this is cool. So, again, thank you very much for giving me this kindly gift. Um, I, I, I never bothered... I, I don't ask for nothing. You know, obviously, if someone gives it, I appreciate it. Uh, there was actually a girl there who... I helped her out build a Gundam. And... She, uh, she, you know, I, I, I helped her out. At, oh, fine, no big deal. She comes back with a, with a, 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 an energy drink for me. Actually, she came back with an energy drink for everybody else, but she gave one to me. And I said, "Oh, thank you, thank you very much." She, she didn't have to, but she did. Appreciate it. Thanks. That was pretty nice. That's what I liked about this show, this event, how people communicated and networked with each other, and 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 it was really, really great to see something like that especially this is the this is the community that i wanted to see build up here in your in in the new york area just continue building up continue to to share your experiences and share your work all this cool stuff i, I really like this this is this was the best part of the show best part for me and i'm glad that i was able to attend it and try my very best to help you guys out mm. so you probably guys are asking me, what did I get? Well, for starters, um, I bought this cap. The uh, Gundam cap. There was, uh, I guess, one cap that had like uh, the kanji word for Gundam, I guess. And I would have liked to see, I think there was a red cap with the Xeon, but I, I, was, I, I like the black. I like this one better because I like the gold and the white trim here. I was able to wear it during my time at the show, so that was good. Um, hang on a second. When I got the cap, I was looking around. This was like on, on, was it the first day? I think it was the first day. And this was when I was leaving. And I said, uh, I went into the blue fin booth quickly to see what I can get. But I wasn't like, I was like, I, I, I gotta be careful with the money, of course. So I said, let me look for something simple and quick. The exclusives I did not want to even look at. Because I really do not want to buy a clear kit. And, uh, but I saw this, and I was excited to get it. The one 100,000 scale Super Star Destroyer and one 1450 scale, 14,050, 500 scale Star Destroyer set. Oh, it's kind of cool to get something like this. Yeah. I already have this guy, but I would not mind having him and the other one. Maybe I'll paint the, paint them, um, give it a good tone to it, and do a little forced perspective um, photography. See how it looks. So I got this guy. Um, that was day one. Day two, I didn't feel like buying anything. I was really, you know, I was trying to concentrate my lesson. <clears throat> day three, as uh, as the day was winding down, one of the guys showed me this, and he said, "There's something here." I said, "Really, really? All right, I think I'll get one." So I got this. Uh, Flame toys uh, or flame models, I could say, um, Megatron IDW Autobot version. IDW Autobot version. So, I forgot that now Megatron is an Autobot. I wish I can get, you know what? I wonder if he's a, if there's a, a decal in there or a sticker to make him, um, make him, uh, you know, uh, Decepticon. I'll have to find something like that. But that's kind of cool. So, yeah, I got this at the, at the Bluefin booth as well. I also forgot to mention in, in, uh, that... 
besides Gundam and besides uh, the Star Wars kit, uh, there was another group on the other side of the f uh, build, uh, facility. They were also building um, a low, ver a low. I wouldn't. Not, I don't know what you call it. A low grade version or a step down version of uh, Dragon Ball kits. Basically, uh, Goku. I didn't get the kit, but I did see it. And basically, your building is the body going from the legs up, but it's a solid piece while the arms and the head are, are separate pieces that can be moved independently. I wish I had that here. I wish I did. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can grab it, so no big deal. Also, when I got this, I got this neat little poster. Sorry, bent. This is kind of cool. I like this poster. Two sides. This is Megatron. So that's kind of cool. I'll put this over here. All right. Uh, the next day, which was the last day, I have to bring the camera uh, unit back a bit because uh, what I'm about to do, open up is pretty big. I purchased the lucky bag. Now, Bluefin, within the past few months, they were, uh, what do you call it? They were selling these mystery boxes, which you can go online and purchase it. But then they were doing these as well. And I said, oh, okay, cool. But you had the choice of A, B, or C. So I. I decided to get the C one. See what it comes what it comes with. Uh, there is my knife. Oh, I'll use uh, no, not use it. Where is it? Oh, okay, there we go. Let's see what this comes with. According to this, you're purchasing this. This is forty dollars. But it should contain at least seventy dollars worth of items. We'll find that soon enough. I like these little mystery mystery things. There we go. I'm trying to grab the small parts. I'm, as you can see, I'm not seeing anything. I'm here. Trying to grab the small parts here. Oh, okay, I got something here. I got two things here. Ooh! Alright, I have this already. The uh, These little rubbery things. This is, uh, of course, the um, RX-79 gun cannon. And, oh, okay, these are the Mobile Suit Imaginations. It's like battle damage mobile suits. Okay, cool, I got one of those. What else? Oh, okay. I got a universal unit. What kit is this? <laughs> I got the Alex again. I think I have the Alex already, but that's cool. I got the Alex already. Is that cool? And then I have uh, the Molesuk on the mini kit collections. Um, don't know what it is. It's like a, this one doesn't tell you what it is. So there's a possibility I can get one of these guys. And I remember buying this exclusively on a magazine. <laughs> And I got the new Gundam. Clear. <laughs> Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, me, me, uh, this guy right here. What you say? <laughs> it's like a pin or is it a ornament? I don't know. But kind of cool. Alright. Anything else? Oh, more. Oh, okay. This is new. Micro Wars Zaku. I have the Char Zaku, but I haven't. I haven't gotten the normal Zaku. All right, nice. This is getting cool. What else? What else? Anything else here? Anything else on the side? No. All right. So I'm gonna pull out the kit to see what it is out of the bag, and it is. I'm gonna put these guys back here. Right now, I'm still not looking at the bag. I got. Wow. Well, I. That's a surprise. That is a surprise. I was not prepared for this, but cool. Now I finally got it. I never got a chance to purchase this guy 
when it first came out. I've been seeing it online and everybody was showing their builds, but now I got the uh, Gundam Zer Zer Zerachil. Zerachil. Oh. I was, and, and I'll tell you something. There were three bags, and I was lifting the bags and touching them and seeing, okay, what's this contain, what this contains, and what this contains. And I felt that this was a little bigger. So, okay. Sure enough, I got this. Well worth the 40 bucks for the other stuff as well. And I'll probably give those away as gifts for everybody. Wow, this is actually a very nice surprise. Let's put some stuff here and here because I got more, more stuff. Uh, besides the bag, I picked up a few things that I saw at the show. Um, pick this one up. This is Mr. Hobby's Mr. Melani foam sheet for flat finishes. 250, I guess, grit. I don't, I don't know if it's that rough or soft, but I saw it for three bucks. Pick it up. Something to try. Um, looking around, obviously, when you look around all these kits, and you say, ah, you have that, you have that, you have that, and I look at ones, I say, uh, I would like to get that, but the budget's going to kill me, and whatever. Um, but then I saw some smaller kits, and I saw this one, and considering that I have the high-grade version of this, I said, it'd probably be a cool idea to build this one when I build the high-grade. I have the uh, G Generation F Mag Maganac. This was six bucks. That's fun to get this. No problem. There you go. So I got all this and I said, alright, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I think I am done. But then I saw this for a very, very reasonable, reasonable price. And I don't and I gotta go back up furthermore. Cause this is biggie. This is a biggie. I got this uh, one forty-eight scale RX seventy-eight two mega size, mega size scale or mega size model. You know what? The reasons why I wanted to get this, uh, and it was all because of one person on YouTube that reviewed it, and well, he didn't rebuild it; he just got it. Um, does anybody remember Toy Galaxy? Um, I think it was Dan Larson, I think his name is. He was at the show, and he actually stopped, he passed by the, the Blue, Blue uh, Fin uh, group. And I was like, hey, hey, are you, yeah, and he goes, we, we I, I said, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm a big fan of your channel, and, and I really like what you did with the review of the, uh, our, of the 148 scale Gundam and he he said thank you and all that stuff we had a nice little chat here he is as you can see in the picture that I have so I said oh, I gotta get this guy on you know at least finally meet somebody uh, recognizable I mean obviously there's people that you can recognize but this guy was like a celebrity to me because I watch his uh, his uh, YouTube videos especially you know when he does his historical uh, um, videos on, on you know old cartoons whether it's G.I. Joe um, Transformers. Um, I think he did the mask one. I don't know if I, if I remember correctly, but uh, I think the last one that he did, which I remembered fondly, was he was reviewing the Battle of the Planets and the many versions of it that that was dubbed, redubbed, double dubbed, all that. So that was like my the funniest thing to see. So it was kind of cool to see him at the show, and when I saw this, and this was very cheap. It, well, guess what? It was a toss-up between this guy and the 160th scale Bill Strike, the old one. The old one had... Uh, the amount that I paid for all this well, would have been the amount for the Bill Strike. And as much as I would love to get the Bill Strike, and obviously the Bill Strike, Perfect Strike is coming... The Perfect Bill Strike is coming out, so... I said I'll go with this one because this guy's huge. I like it. I think I'm going to start collecting mega size scales now that you know it, 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 it's very few and far in between they do make them make them and i was able to grab the last one of this big bad boy yeah very good price very good deal that was it no more oh well one last thing i was given uh i was given this 
at the show, the 40th, I don't know if you guys can see it, let me just zoom in, the 40th anniversary, beyond 40th uh, Gundam, and not only that the, per the people at Bluefin were so kind enough to give me this, they also gave me it in gold as well. That's very, very generous of these people. So, with that being said, that is all the stuff. That's my haul from Comic-Con 2019. Now it's time for me to get ready for the next show. The next show that I am planning to go. And hopefully, I'll have some very, very, very good news soon to announce. So, until then, I'd like to thank you all for watching and supporting my channel. Thank you for the, you guys to come on over and see me. And if I didn't respond to you at the time that you guys see me, obviously I was working. But obviously, this reach me out when I go to Anime NYC. Um, thank you again. And what can I say? But stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You guys all have a great day.